welcome to your space with your host Hannah Arinito. We are here once again on your screen every Sunday at 5 p.m. With me in studio today is a fantastic crew and I would like them to introduce themselves. Hello to the lady here. Thank you Hannah. Good evening viewers. I am Patricia Achan Okiria, Deputy Inspector General of Government and I'm very happy to be part of this conversation today when we are demystifying the national values to fight corruption. Mm. Yes, hello and welcome to the show. Thank you, Hannah. Uh, my name is Joel Sakwa and I'm very happy to know that you are watching. Uh, thank you, Hannah, for having a beautiful smile. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Joel. <laughs> yes. All right, thank you, Hannah. Well, my name is Jeremy Andruda, Peter. I'm happy to be here more so as we talk about corruption today and I'm excited for the show today. Thank you. Thank you so much Jeremy for coming on to the show. I think there is nobody better than you on the topic we have for today. We're going to be talking about fighting corruption with brotherhood. Maybe let's start from the centerpiece of it. What is brotherhood Jeremy? Thank you Hannah. Well brotherhood I would say you know, as boys, we love to say, this yeah. is my brother. My yeah. brother. Cut my guy. Too. This is my bro. Yeah, bros. <laughs> my bro. <laughs> the bros, you know. And so what brotherhood is, I believe brotherhood is having a oneness, a oneness, a certain unity, a thing that joins you all in that you're one and nothing differentiates you really. Yeah, that's what I would say. Brotherhood is. Yeah. Patricia, the opposite of brotherhood is sisterhood. <laughs> <laughs> what is sisterhood? Sisterhood is basically having that unity of purpose as sisters and also being concerned about what concerns each other. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to look at um, what is the importance of us to have interpersonal relationships in our community and especially as young people why do you think that is important joel um okay there is a south african politician called julius malema but you're going to say nelson mandela <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's do, let's, uh, okay it's julius malema normally says in africa we have a spirit of ubuntu like Ubuntu is Africanacity. Uh, it is the quality of knowing that, yes, we are born in this continent and we must work together, we must put together our efforts mm. and we must do things together. So, bring it to our context. In Uganda, we have Ugandanism, I can call it that. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is the spirit of Uganda, mm -hmm. what keeps us together. So as a society, we must maintain that glue. Every effort that we take on, we take it on with Ugandanism, with mm -hmm. oneness. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes, Dr. Patricia, what do you say about that? Well, just to add on what Joel has said, we need to have the spirit of patriotism the love for our country and the people who live in it. We need to develop and encourage positive aspects of culture and discourage practices which rob this country, practices like corruption. Mm. So if we have that spirit of Ugandanism, then what is Ugandan should be protected and preserved. The people who live in Uganda should be respected as citizens because they are Ugandan. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Now, I, I do know that everybody on this panel before has been in a place of leadership, has been in a place of um, being in charge of, let's say, a group of people. And maybe an, uh, the audience really wants to understand why is it important that leaders or young people who are leading, why is it important for us to have interpersonal relationships with one another? Jeremy. Well, interpersonal relationships... I've been a leader before and I am a leader and I believe you cannot lead people that you do not have a relationship with. Yeah. True, true. Otherwise you become someone that's up there and the people are down here and so as a result you will not know what the people need first of all. Secondly you will not know, you will not have accountability mm -hmm. if you do not have interpersonal relationships. And so the purpose of interpersonal relationships of you as a leader with the people you're leading, right? It is 
such that you are able to know what do they need, yeah. such that you know how they can help you. And in any case, if you can only be humble enough, they can help you to know where you are going They're wrong, wrong. Okay. where you are going right. Because we can only, we, can, we have two eyes, and there's a reason as to why we cannot see ourselves. We Definitely. need a mirror to, to be seen, it. so these people oh. can act as a mirror yeah. for, to reflect in our lives, you know, what you're not doing right as a leader. Because I mean, the people you lead, personally the people I lead, mm -hmm. who will genuinely come and tell me, yeah, yeah, you're my leader, but I think we should do like this and like this, in a nice way. At times it's the team I am leading with and, mm -hmm. you know, letting them letting them have the opportunity and the privilege of telling me where I am wrong, congratulating me where I am right. Do leaders actually, what, what is polite feedback? Because I see a number of leaders, even at a national level, even at a lower level at university, who take it in a very offensive manner. I've seen a number of national leaders being taken to court, being taken before committees, and they are feeling offended, you know, when they are being asked to account and account. So Dr. Patricia, you from the, uh, from the, uh, as your office, the office of the IGG, how do you politely give feedback to leaders when you need accountability from them? Thank you very much, Hannah. I want to pick from where Jeremy stopped. Leaders are supposed to be like a mirror, a mirror of excellence, mm -hmm. and offer leadership, leadership by example, yeah. so that others see you model the way for others to follow. So about giving feedback, mm -hmm. positive feedback, Sometimes as leaders, we also get criticisms. And when the criticisms come, they come to sharpen us. Yes. You go back and examine yourself and say, me, Patricia, I think I had erred in this way. I think I would have done this better. Not to respond and be defensive. And About it. Yes. And how do I communicate to others respectfully, with due respect? Mm -hmm. You say, well, I think there's a point of improvement here. Mm -hmm. I think you can add on this concept for us to perform better. Yeah. So you bring it with respect, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it can be taken. But if you bring it with aggressiveness, then the other person will get defensive. Because remember, leaders has, have so many things they're de dealing with. They're dealing with power, authority, and they're also dealing with resources. Mm -hmm. So someone who has money and power can be very dangerous. Very. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. if you <laughs> offer leadership by example, then you will be thinking about serving others, mm. not to wait to be served. And in the process of serving others, you have to go down to the level of others. And that calls for humility, that calls for a character that is grounded in the principles and values of accountability, yeah. of respect for others, of love for others. Because you cannot convince people to model or to follow the way you're di the direction you're taking them if you don't show them love or respect. That's true. Yes. I'm going to give you a simple crash course for you that is watching. How to give positive feedback. Now there's something called the sandwich method. Okay. Where you give a good, a, you give a good um, response or a good, good feedback. You know? Mm. Let's say, um, Andrew, you, 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 you did a really good speech. I liked how you were creative about it. Yeah. Then you're giving the harsh one in there, in oh. between of the burger, in between of the sandwich. Yeah. Where I'm like, but I had a lot of uh, pause fillers and I had a lot of uh, broken English. And then you go back in again with something positive. So that's the sandwich method and how you can give positive feedback to your leaders or to the people around you, mm -hmm. even when you want accountability. Now, the reason why we're talking about interpersonal relationships is, is that it is very important when it comes to the fight against corruption. You can't fight corruption in, in your society, in your school, in your home, without having good interpersonal skills or good interpersonal relationships. Maybe let me go to Joel. Joel, why, why is it important for us to have a great relationship with each other and with the community in order to fight corruption? Um, corruption is an in-country vice. That means it is who is corrupt. It's mm. us, the people that are corrupt. So if we are fighting it, we've got to relate with each other. We've got to work with each other. The top leadership cannot alienate the man at the bottom mm. because it's the man at the bottom that will make the man at the top accountable. So if we are to promote accountability, then the top leadership and the people at the bottom should harmonize. 
Now, that harmony is what actually gives the fight greater strength. That's why uh, not a long time ago, mm. we were talking about encouraging people to whistle blow, to talk about what they are seeing mm -hmm. that is going wrong. Of course, some people took it in a certain way. Whistle blowing yes. is not snitching. <laughs> it's a two different concepts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very mm -hmm. true. So if we are going to make those, if we are going to be accountable to each other, leader, be accountable to the lead. Lead, be accountable to the leader. Make sure you tell, uh, you tell him about what is going wrong. Keeping quiet does not make anything better. Mm. Mm. And this is why it is very important for us to take the fight against corruption to the people. Because it's the people's war and we ex expect the people to participate actively. Going back to what you had brought out, Hannah, mm. we have used the carrot and a stick approach. Oh. Where you go down to the districts and talk to the leadership and tell them about their responsibility in the fight against corruption. And then later on, mm. you are going with a, with a stick. You've taken the carrot to show them the way. <laughs> then uh, after some time, you are the one sanctioning arrests and charges against oh, them. Yeah. Yeah. Those who are in breach of the principles you are telling them yeah. about. Just like the way we treat our children. Mm -hmm. You teach them the way, model the example, tell them this is bad, this is good. And when they are in breach, you have to introduce a stick. Mm -hmm. Because when you spare the road, yeah, you, you spoil, spoil the, the child. child. And we have seen leaders learning great lessons, mm. great lessons in, in this okay. approach. Yes. Mm -hmm. OK, you can grab yourself a couple of carrots and have a snack. We're going to be right back. <laughs> Welcome back from that mini break. You are still here with us on Your Space with your host, Hannah Arinite. We're still having a conversation about how brotherhood plays a big part in fighting corruption, even as young people. Now, this one goes to Jeremy specifically. Now, we're talking about interpersonal relationships, and some of us are thinking, mm, those are things for old people, not for us, not for us, the young, the young people. But I, I, I mean, relationships are important, even for young people, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, and in fighting corruption, so what do you have to say about that? Well, if we are to fight corruption, let me begin with this. There's a friend of mine who loves to quote and say, feedback is breakfast for champions. Wow. <laughs> wow. And so if we, <laughs> are, if we are to overcome, if we are to become champions mm. against corruption mm -hmm. and very many different things, we need to get feedback. And so if we are to get feedback, relationship is important. Definitely. Very many people do not get valid feedback because they do not have a good relationship. relationship yeah. It is your friends that you have a good relationship mm -hmm. with that will give you the chili. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And then those oh. who, are, who do you don't have a good relationship with are the ones who will sugarcoat everything. Time, yeah. Why? Because they do not have your best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, like how Joel said really, corruption is a it's a thing that the country has at large because the leaders we have today are not going to be there forever. Okay. So we need also to work with the people such that the generation we are raising will not suffer the same thing. Mm. Like mm -hmm. what have we learned? However, if we are at loggerheads with the population that is arising, they will arise with a sense of vengeance yeah. and not what can we oh. learn, what can okay. we do better. Making, re making relationship really very vital. Yeah. yeah, if we are to fight this. So let's get down to the nitty gritty now, like the activities. What now? I am Hannah, a young person. I'm tuning into your space right now, and I want to know how can I physically and actively get engaged with my community to fight against corruption? What civic engagement, Dr. Patricia, can I do? I think it calls more for social responsibility on the part of the young people. What is it that you can offer out there? Like we need to be able to go out in order to, to do the mindset change mm -hmm. among the people. And going out needs us to team among ourselves. Make friends, go mm -hmm. out as a team, and say for us, we are going to talk about the duties of the citizen. Like we have the Uganda Christian Lawyers Fraternity, mm -hmm. where we have Christian lawyers and law students coming together. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we go out for legal aid, Sometimes you go out for evangelism, nice. but wow. students can team up, young people can team up and go out to the community and talk about the responsibility of the citizen to fight corruption. 
social responsibility. Mm. Because by yourself, as an individual, as a human being, you can't be an, an island. Mm. You need others in order to spread this information out. And then we shall cause the mindset change because the community will begin appreciating their role in the fight against corruption. We can encourage the young people to come out and report the cases where you have seen breaches, where you have seen violations, where you have seen um, things going wrong, you can report to the responsible institutions. Okay. Like those related to fighting corruption, mm -hmm. feel free to approach our offices, the inspectorate of government, and bring the cases to our attention for our action. Because we believe in quickly fixing what we have detected. And the young people can be the detectors out there and be the eyes of the inspectorate of government and report to us. Mm -hmm. Then secondly, we think if the community embraces the war against corruption, we will change, change the perception, the perception index on corruption yeah. in our country. And service delivery will improve mm. and national development will be achieved. It calls for teamwork because this is our country. We must love it. We must keep it together. Mm. We must contribute to the development initiatives in order to make this country improve, yes. I think one of the things that young people are very good at lately is social media. I've seen a number of them raise up using the social media to talk and speak about um, certain breaches in, in public offices. I've seen mm -hmm. them use Twitter, hashtags. <laughs> I mean, now roads are being worked on thanks to the hashtag pothole exhibition, you know, so that is something you can do. Andrea mm -hmm. and, Andrida and um, Sako, what activities have you done, like physically? Mm -hmm. um, to ensure that you are participating with the community to cut down on corruption. Cut down on corruption. Number one, I've been here on your space. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Doing all yes, the sensitization. Have. Yes, you have. Yeah, and by the way, it's very, very, very important, mm. very vital mm. for us to speak about these things. Mm. The conversation needs to be taken out there. And we also need to be more vigilant because uh, as in our communities, we have all sorts of dirty things that we need to report. So whistleblowing is part of our job. We are the foot soldiers on the ground. Mm -hmm. And we speak, as she has said, we are the eyes and ears of the institutional framework. Whereas the framework is there, it is there on ground. There is framework, there is IGG's office, anti-corruption, this and, and these other organizations. They will not function properly if we are not engaged. So we as the young people, our responsibility is to continue engaging mm -hmm. with, with the community as well as with the institutions to ensure that we, co we create the link. I, I mean, for me, thank you so much. Uh, but for me, like personally, I think um, sometimes we look at corruption as a very big thing. You know, I must yeah. be so blow that uh, maybe the VC is cutting on the students' budget or something like that mm. um, with that proper procedure. But even in your smaller capacity, I was a leader at Macquarie University for quite some time, the 88th Guild House, you know, um, and one of the year one students were being um, inappropriately bullied or um, handled by another group of students you know so it was my responsibility um, even regardless of the fact that I was a leader but as somebody who is part of the community it's my responsibility you know to help them teach them how to go about such bullying you know so sometimes look at it as such a huge thing but it actually be something small and that, what has been your experience well, my experience, thank you so much, Hannah, for what you say. That's just what was running Into in my mind. mind. Yeah. Because if we think of corruption as a bigger thing, mm. recently, yeah. this week, my, my lecturer was asking me in class, is, is poverty a macro thing or is it a micro thing? So I believe it's the same question for corruption. Yeah. Is corruption, does corruption start out big or does it start out with not giving your mom the change? Uh -huh. And so... My experience personally, what you began asking me a question, but however, let me begin with my experience. My experience, a few weeks ago, I happened to be organizing something and I happened to have extra money mm. from, you know, the money the people money. had contributed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I did is I told my team, I told the finance person that, you know what, let us at least buy a cake 
Mm. At least let's buy a cake mm -hmm. and, and give use the that people. money. <laughs> but let's use the money. <laughs> yes, we don't yes, want to hear yes, that mm. they stayed yeah, with the yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what? What, what, what? Mm. That is not good on our side. Mm. Yeah. And so just to relate to, just to also answer the question that you asked earlier, that, that, that you asked me and Sakwa about, you know, how corruption mm. is, 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 you know, a, a micro thing. Corruption is actually really micro. It's really micro. And so my urge is that, is that can we start from our siblings? Can we start from ourselves? Can we start from our families? Like, do not let your sibling start telling your parents lies. Mm. Even you yourself, don't tell your parents lies. Don't, tell, don't be a liar. Mahatma Gandhi once said that be the change you want to see. And so with that, if we are to be the change we want to see. It has to start with us. Before we point fingers, Hannah did this, Hannah does this, Hannah does the there other. Are three the point, there are three fingers this. pointing back at you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> As there you are, point at somebody, there are three exactly. pointing back at you. And so let's start with us. Mm. Let us yeah. start with us because the change begins with us. Because much as you're expecting someone else not to be corrupt, the other person is also expecting you not, not to, to be, be corrupt. corrupt. So mm. be the change mm. that you want to. See. It is yeah. a cycle. It reminds me of sometime in high school when I was a uh, debate president. So there was extra money in the bank for our tenure. And so uh, some of us are just said that, Hannah, huh, let's take this extra money, divide <laughs> it among ourselves. <laughs> but Sad. the Holy Spirit that day was working. As I was going to withdraw, Good. the Holy Spirit said, Hannah, stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> so as we come to the close of the conversation, Dr. Patricia, so what, why do you think this is important? Why do you think it's important for young people to play a part in fighting um, alongside the community corruption? It is very important for young people to be involved in the fight against corruption because one, first of all, the youth are the majority population in mm -hmm. our country. And we are looking at them as the future leaders. So if we mentor them now and nurture them and they go grow knowing their role and responsibilities in fighting corruption, there will be a big difference mm. because remember they are the majority. Yeah. So if we bring them to rally behind us, the inspectorate of government, I believe we will have a significant impact in this country because the youth are full of energy. We, we expect them to bring, we expect you to bring <laughs> that energy. So viewers out there, let's join hands and fight corruption. Yeah. Young people out there rally behind the inspectorate of government in fighting corruption. Come up with new innovative ways in dealing with corruption in your institutions, in your families, and together we'll make a difference in this country. Thank you very much. Sakwa, I saw you pulling up a bit of weight. Have you been <laughs> she, going to the gym she, or so? No, she was saying that we should put in the yeah. energy. Okay, energy. just keep it short and simple, Sakwa and, uh, and Rida, and then you can say bye-bye. Right. Yeah, I th uh, we should be inspired. Mm -hmm. I'm already inspired. Uh, we should get thinking about what we should be doing in our schools, in our colleges, in our homes, in our districts. We are the change that we want to see. Well, all I can say is that Uganda and corruption, that's a very heavy weight to carry, and we cannot leave it only for the government. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And so we need to put our hands together to ensure that we do away with this corruption. So let's work with the government, starting with us personally, and then as a result, the whole country. Yeah, the whole and we shall country. see a better Uganda. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. This has been Your Space with your host, Hannah. Ari Nitwe, take your carrots and uh, that was actually my biggest pick out from today, the carrot and the skin. <laughs> <laughs> See you next Sunday. <laughs>